Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. Warrior fan. Welcome to Mound Ridge, Kansas. This is the Central National Bank pregame show as we get ready for the very first Marion High School Warrior football game of the 2014 season. We are obviously, as I said, on the road in Mound Ridge. This is Mike Powers here with Roger Schroeder. Good evening, Roger. Good evening, Mike. It's chilly. Yeah, <laughs> who would have thunk it? We've, uh, I was thinking about that. Gina will remember this, and Jay might as well, and the number of times that we've been on the road <clears throat> in, excuse me, in September and over 100 degrees, worrying about kids passing out, worrying about ourselves passing out. I don't know what the temperature is. I think it's somewhere in the mid-30s. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like it. After it was 90-some yesterday, I, I'll believe you. Yeah, yeah, there's a big, there's a, the difference between yesterday's high and today's high is a lot of, a lot of degrees. Well, enough about that. Uh, it's great weather to play football, and uh, we seem to have done pretty well dodging the raindrops. We hope to get through the night without any rain. Our crew consists of myself and Roger. Gene Winkler is our producer-director. Jay Smith is, of course, the uh, cameraman that is up here with us. He braves the heights. Danny Maddox has got the tight shots down below because Danny won't get up here with us. Jay won't let him come up here, actually. Uh, so that's the crew for tonight. I want to start. It is Central National Bank pregame show, and Roger, I'll let you talk about the football game. But I want to start by uh, just a little bit of an uh, acknowledgement, I guess. Casey Case is not here. Um, most of the people that watch this are aware that yesterday there was a very bad traffic accident um, and uh, one lady was killed and uh, Casey's mom was seriously, seriously injured. The good news is that Jean Case, his mom, who uh, the uh, Booster Club named as the uh, Warrior super fan, I guess, fan of the year at the athletic banquet last spring, uh, she's going to be okay. She's got several broken bones. She's beat up and hurting and in the hospital still. But uh, we are thinking of Eugene, and we're thinking of the family of Joyce Smith. And uh, so for those folks, we're, we miss you. And with that, we'll get back to the football game. And, Roger, your thoughts on the young season. Well, I, I think a young season is a good way to put it because we've got a young group. Uh, there is There are some returning veterans, some returning starters that uh, – are very, very good players, but a lot of young Warriors are going to see the field tonight for the first time. Um, and it, you know, young teams, it's always good to get out of the gate and, you know, let them make a couple mistakes, get it out of their way, and just let them get into the, to kind of the flow of the game. And I think that's what uh, Coach Tieroff and the rest of the staff is going to try to do tonight. I thought it was interesting in, in one of the publications recently I read that uh, Grant quoted as saying that last year's senior laden squad that, of course, had a great season, went uh, into the playoffs, and uh, just had a had a great football season. He said they were um, ready to play games two weeks before the season started. And then he said he thought this team might be ready to play games two, three weeks after the season yeah. started. And you know, that, that class last year, it wasn't just a, a good football class. It was a good class in every athletic season, in the classroom, sure. out of the classroom. It was just a remarkable class. And it's not taking anything away from this group or the group behind them or behind them. But, you know, when you lose that much leadership and kids that saw time on the field for a number of years, there's going to be, you know, a period of getting these young kids in and getting them kind of into the game and into the flow of things. The good news is is that this freshman class is uh, a class that has been about as heralded as anything since, oh, the class that uh, went to the state championship yep. game. Uh, so that that's the good news is. I'm not saying this group is that good, but there's a lot of good talent on there. There's part. some potential, and it's going to start with a, a, a freshman uh, playing quarterback tonight in Jack Schneider. Um, I've heard, I haven't seen him play yet, obviously, first game of the season, but heard great things coming out of their uh, preseason camp about him. Uh, it started last year even with him as an eighth grader running rampant on the middle school teams. Yes. And so, you know, I'm excited to see him play. I'm excited to see how he kind of commands the offense, but you've always got your veteran guys and you're going to have Kyle Palak up front you're going to have Adam Jansen sitting right behind you so you know there is pressure on him I'm sure as a freshman stepping in and, and starting quarterback of the varsity team but he's got veteran guys around him both behind him and in front of him that I think can take some of the weight off of his shoulders and help him. The upperclassmen on this squad are um, Jacob Baldwin, uh, Jacob's a senior, I'm just going to go seniors at this point in time, seniors and juniors. Um, Jacob is a He'll be the backup quarterback. He's a veteran. He could easily step in in that quarterback role. He's also going to play a defensive end. Seth Snelling, a wide receiver, defensive back. Um, 
Tyler Newfeld is a uh, senior running back linebacker. Adam Jansen was mentioned, running back linebacker. Nathan Sear, big Nathan's an offensive and defensive lineman. Kyle Palick, the offensive line and linebacker. Braden Fahey, an offensive line and defensive line. Then you, those are people that had a lot of playing time in the past. You've also got William Adami, Adam Shaleen, Dylan Carpenter, Brad Stone, Remington Putter, um, who are also juniors and seniors, but th that will definitely have some uh, impact on, on the games and the season. Here's the thing. I just named 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 kids. That's your juniors and seniors. Yep. There's 42 on the squad. 42 kids so you got a lot of young players a lot of young kids and like like we said earlier they're going to see the field tonight and, and it's out of necessity but they're they're talented enough to step in there there is going to be a learning curve as there is in basically any sport as a young player but i think this this group is is ready to step up and there's enough veteran leadership there i think that can make the transition easy well uh, as we continue and then go into the latter part of the central national pregame show we don't have casey case as we mentioned and casey we miss you uh, but let's talk about Mound Ridge. This is a squad that returns five starters on offense, five starters on defense. In the past, they've run a wing T uh, offense, but Coach Tiroff expects that they might try to use some of the spread offense this year. I guess you could see them shifting in and out of that. Um, they got good speed. Uh, their best player is number 20. That's Deshaun Fife. He's a 5-foot, 1080-pound senior and good speed, and he'll be someone we'll have to watch. They look for cutback lanes on their on their running game, and they've got a young offensive line. Grant thinks they're going to be um, good eventually, but they're kind of like our kids. They're young, although they're very big. Yes, that's yeah, a good size offensive line. You can see there 270, 265, 260, and that's just on the left side and the center. So, I mean, my hunch would be maybe they're going to go left a little bit. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Well, uh, we thank you for joining us, and uh, Roger, any last thoughts before we um, get ready for some football? No, excited to, to kick off the, the season, and hopefully we can stay dry tonight and, and, uh, and see a Warrior victory and head back to Marion. So we thank um, our pregame sponsor, and we'll be right back with the opening kickoff. Central National Bank, a family and employee-owned company, has been providing Kansans with sound financial advice since 1884. They are dedicated to providing the quality service that makes our customers and the communities they serve successful. In the 21st century, Central National embraces its strong heritage and strives to be the financial resource of choice for the Marion community. A highlight of 2012 was the introduction of the Friend Referral Program. By referring friends to the bank, customers can earn up to $25 per referral. Prairie Land Partners Incorporated is a John Deere agricultural equipment dealership specializing in large ag, turf, and integrated solution products. Prairie Land has nine stores in South Central Kansas and more than 250 employees. Prairie Land maintained a strong business position and has completed a total store remodel in its Winfield location. Continued growth, we will be adding Honda products to our offerings. Also an expansion of the Marion location is planned. Marion National Bank offers full service banking. They offer loans for any worthwhile purpose, including agriculture, commercial, consumer, and all types of real estate, including home loans. For the investor, we offer certificates of deposit, individual retirement accounts, and savings accounts. Personal and business checking accounts are available for your daily needs. A Visa check card can be used with all personal transaction accounts. There's an ATM in our entryway for your after-hour cash needs. St. Luke Hospital, providing state-of-the-art health care services to meet all your needs. St. Luke was recently remodeled in 2012 to include a new physical therapy area, a new patient care area, as well as a beautiful new entrance. It also has a current CT scanner to provide your scanning needs. St. Luke Hospital, right here at home, right here for you. We are back and ready to get this ball game started. You see the captains meeting on the field. The captains for the Warriors are number three. That's Jacob Baldwin. Number 33 is Tyler Newfeld. 55, Kyle Palick. And 64, Dylan Carpenter. So for the upperclassmen out there, for the seniors as captains. 
And I didn't see who won the kick. I saw we'll be receiving. <clears throat> Mound Ridge won the toss and, de and deferred. Deferred, okay. The uh, first quarter of this game is brought to you by Eagle Communications, Prairie Land Partners, and Mary National Bank. Roger, seriously, I made mention of this earlier. You could not, if you as a player, you couldn't have a better night. To oh, play this football. is perfect. Yeah, it's going to be very comfortable for the kids. Yeah, the alternative is, you know, 90 degrees humidity. They're taking water break timeouts right. because they have to. You know, the officials are calling them tonight. I don't think we're going to see much cramping. Maybe a little tired legs, but I don't think we're going to see any cramping fits like we normally do. Several years ago, we had a game and started the season at Minneapolis, Kansas, and. No, it's actually Minneapolis, Minnesota, but oh. yeah, Minneapolis. Long I, don't, I don't know why I threw the Kansas in there, but anyway. My wife does the same thing. She <laughs> says, you know, down in Hillsborough, Kansas. Like, yes, I know where Hillsboro <laughs> is. <laughs> it's right down the road. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad she does it, too. <laughs> I have a compatriot. But in any event, it was it was just one of those. It was over 100 degrees at kickoff, and, and I don't know how many times they stopped for water breaks because the officials just did it any time. Yeah. I think they thought they needed one. Yeah, so. absolutely. There was a high school game on ESPN last weekend or something down in Alabama, and it was the same thing. Every couple minutes they're blowing the whistle and bringing the trainers out. Well, here comes the kick. Everybody's lined up and ready. Snelling deep for the Warriors. Pretty good end over end kick. That's going to go into the end zone, be a touchback. So no return. And uh, there is a pretty good, we ought to mention that. You see the leaves there on the trees, but there's a pretty good north breeze here. Well, there you go. A shot of the flag. Kind of shows you what uh, Mound Ridge is going to have at their back here in this first quarter. Number four, Jack Snyder, the freshman, in at quarterback. We're having a little trouble here. The ball must have gotten, I don't know, wet or something. Wet or a, maybe each, uh, each team has a game ball. Maybe they got a flip-flop. That could be. There's a shift. Snelling back to the tailback position. Snyder keeps. And he's not going to gain much, but I kind of like that, Roger. Uh, we talked about this on the way up. You know, it's his first varsity experience. He needs to take a hit. I guess let's get it over with. Yeah. Yeah, you couldn't even really tell. The, the mesh point there was kind of blown up by the Mound Ridge defensive line. I don't know if, if Jansen had it or the young quarterback had it, but either way it was a Well, a, yeah, I no may have missed. I thought, I thought Snyder kept it, but perhaps not. There's no gain, second and ten. Snyder definitely kept that one. And he may get a yard. Gang tackling by the Wildcats. Snyder, although a freshman, is, is not a small kid. He's six foot. He's only 155. Give him a couple of years and uh, 20 more pounds, and he'll be quite the specimen. I think that frame will, you know, kid's probably 14, 15 years old right yeah. now. I mean, he's going to fill out. Matter of how much, hopefully he can stay in the quarterback position. <laughs> Warrior shift again. Snyder's going to pass. That's to Baldwin. Nice gain. He's going to be short, I think, of the first down. Just short. Their little tight end pop pass type thing off the play action fake. Defe defense was right on his back. Scoreboard says fourth and one. It's about fourth and one inch, but uh, here in the, with the wind in your face early in the game, you don't want to give up the possibility of field position, yeah. so the Warriors will punt. Adam Jansen back to punt for the Warriors. Good snap. Jansen's going to keep. It's a fake. Oh, he fights. I don't think he got there. I don't know if he there. got it. I think he got pushed out short. The coaching staff on the other side of the field is celebrating, and so are the fans. So it doesn't really matter. We'll see where they spot it. He got it close. Doesn't matter. He didn't get, on, get enough. So it almost it, looked like he lost a yard or two. They pushed him, did a good job funneling him to the sideline. He's in kind of that 12th defender over there. Right. 
And I think you're right. He lost a couple of yards, Roger, on that. But he had nowhere to go when he got outside. So the Warriors' defense will have to uh, be tested real early here. The ball on the 27-yard line. One man split out wide right for the Wildcats. And up over the right side, running back hurdles of a couple of people, but a nice flow to the ball by the defense. Very good job. Both defenses, obviously just one play for the Warriors, but on the previous drive, Mound Ridge defense really fly into the football. It's not just one guy bringing down the ball carry. you got six, seven hats around the ball. I'm sure both coaches are happy with the starts on defense so far. Snelling and a bunch of his buddies in on that tackle for the Warriors. Three-yard gain, second and seven now. Got two slot backs, a tail back, and the receiver split out on the right side. And off to the tailback, and he's hitting the backfield. Big Nathan Sear there, getting a lot of penetration and making the stop. That's a good replay. We've got, uh, tell you what, we've got the dream team going right now. We've got Jay Smith that's getting you all the action from the wide angle uh, here so that you don't miss anything. And then we've got Danny Maddox dialed in tight. And uh, Gene's just playing a replay of whatever Gene feels like playing. We're going to get a good shot, and <laughs> Gene's going to hit a button, and it's going to come on. It's going to be great. So with the loss, that makes it third and eight. And off and again hitting the backfield. That's Jacob Baldwin. Second man in is Peyton Heidebrick. Great stand there by the Warrior defense. Get the ball inside the 30-yard line, and you, you manage to hold them there and, and look at a fourth and long situation here for the Wildcats. Yeah, fourth and 11, and uh, ball pushed back now. Well, wait a minute. Ball on 25. They, it's, they said ball on 27 when the drive started. That That's must have been a mistake. Interesting spotting. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> It is fourth and 11. They are out, spread out. That's good pressure coming in from the Warriors. They need to bring him down, and they do. Dylan Carpenter with some pressure from the right side. We'll get a replay here and see who else was in on that. I think that was Baldwin and Carpenter and... Uh, Great job there by yeah. number three, Jacob Baldwin, not letting the quarterback break contain. He kind of funneled the play back into his buddies, and we had good pursuit and take him down on fourth and long, turn the ball over. Dylan Carpenter at 5'11", 158. Does not look like he ought to be playing the position he's playing, but, he, <laughs> man, he's got, he brought some speed to the game there. So Warrior first and 10 on the 34 now. Hand off to the fullback, Jansen. And he breaks through the initial tackles. Breaks through a couple more. Nice run by Jansen. Good carry there on first down. And you're going to give yourself a, another first down. Fresh set moving towards midfield. Good positive play for the Warriors. Ball out to the 44 on the Warriors' side. Again, as we said before, moving into a pretty stiff breeze. Got a fullback and a tailback behind Snyder. Tailback gets the carry this time. Nice moves, free up the middle of the field. That's number seven, Seth Snelling. It's a foot race. Snelling drugged down inside the five, and I think there's going to be a horse collar uh, call on that, which will give the Warriors another yard or so. That far down the field, it's not going to be a hold or anything like that. You're thinking a horse collar or a face mask, maybe right at the end of the play. See if we can see anything here. You're no longer allowed. You can't grab them by the back of the shoulder pads. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's a cheap call. Personally. I'm not sure. I, I mean, obviously, we want the calls to go our way. Yeah, yeah I'll I, take it if I it's I don't ours. know that we quite deserve that one. I haven't seen a call yet from no. the head official. Oh, did they call a face mask? Personal foul face mask. So they're going to offset. Oh, wow. my goodness. You know, I only saw the one flag, and that was right down near right the tackle. There. Yeah. I have a hard time believing that anybody's going to be holding when the guy's down at the one-yard line. The face mask was kind of what we thought. Yeah. The hold was a surprise, and we're just going to act like that didn't happen, I guess. 
Congress. That's exactly <laughs> what we're going to do. It's offsetting penalties, and so you know you see that from time to time. Offsetting penalties is supposed to mean well, you both had a penalty, so neither one benefits. But in fact, pretty clearly, Mount Ridge benefits. The defense too. definitely benefits from this offsetting. <laughs> yes. That'll make it first and ten again from the Warrior 44. Like what I'm seeing so far from this young squad. Long way to go. Ball's on, Ball's the, ground. on the ground. Looks like the Warriors recovered. And Jansen got on, got out of the bottom of the pile with that. Yeah. We. Um, this is a excuse. People say, "Don't give me excuses," but I'm gonna hear. I'm here to tell you right now. That's all you're getting out of me is excuses. <laughs> but when we're at home in the the press box, we have such a great view of the field, and the uh, crew for the school district they mark each the yard lines. We got all that. here. We can't see as well. We've we got, don't have the yard lines. We've marked. got five yard guesses, is what so we have. So most of our mistakes are not our fault. There's a Snelling coming around this side. Oh, Snelling drug down. The way he went down, I thought it might have been a face uh, mask there, but I don't think so. Yep. They got him by the shirt. Third and ten, still from the 44. Snelling at tailback, Jansen at fullback. Snyder keeps, throws it over the middle. That's, oh boy. Yeah, there's a penalty. That was intended for number 20, Brad Stone, and uh, they just knocked him off his feet as he was in the pass pad. You know, the ball, I thought, as it came out of, uh, out of Jack Snyder's hand, I thought it was a little overthrown, and then I looked down and see one of our receivers <laughs> laying on the field, and, well, that's the reason. And he kept running, <laughs> been allowed to keep running. He might have made that close. <laughs> So that'll give the Warriors a 15-yard uh, penalty. That'll give them a first down. The ball will be on the 41-yard line of the Wildcats. The Mound Ridge field, we talked a little bit about the uh, the grass looks great. I mean, it looks really plush yes. out there. What they don't have is they don't have the markings on it. On that, each individual yard line. Yeah, which are, uh, we've just come to really appreciate that in Marion. We're spoiled. Snyder keeps. No, I, I, I bought the fake. He handed off to Snelling. Snelling's like a uh, pinball machine out there bouncing around. We had a name for him last year while he played defense, and I can't think of what it was because he'd come flying in, make plays out of nowhere. and Yeah. Was, was it Casey called him the rocket or The something? rocket or the torpedo or, or something. something like that. <laughs> what, what was it, Jay? Torpedo. Torpedo, okay. Torpedo's not bad. That works for a running back, too. Yeah. Got through the hole like a speeding torpedo. torpedo. <laughs> speeding torpedo. <laughs> Second 11 from the 42. Loss of one on the play. Snyder wants to pass. Gets it away. Pass is hauled in. There'll be a nice gain on the play. It'll be a third down and about five. Good catch there. Uh, Mason Peterson going up and getting the ball. You know, Roger, um, before the season starts, <clears throat> we don't you know, really have the ability. We don't have a depth chart or anything like that to go by. So I always try to kind of mark the names I think I'll see. And usually I can get kind of sort of close. Already in this game, there have been four or five names we've called of players contributing that I don't have highlighted. Yeah. I mean, there's two freshmen on the field right now, and that's just at the skill position. So I don't know exactly what the line looks like. Oh, nice job. Snyder gets it away. That's a first down for the Warriors. When we see that replay, watch. I think he fumbled the ball just a little bit, but he kept his cool. If we can see, where is he? Right behind yeah, the marker. he was right behind the <laughs> marker. <laughs> Good camera work, Danny. <laughs> and Jacob Baldwin on the receiving end of that catch. Very good job on his part. Brings the ball down to the 27 of Mound Ridge. Nice drive going down to four minutes and 15 seconds to go in this first quarter. This is all against the wind. Snyder keeps. Oh, he cuts in back outside. Now he's turned the corner. Snyder down the sideline. Oh, they're going to call him out on the three. He made the lunge to the pylon, he but did. I think he got drug out of bounds there just short. He did the NFL uh, ball in one hand, hit the pylon. Uh, 
coaches cringe when they see Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Until the, until, the, until the arms go up. <laughs> Lots of bad things can happen when you stick that ball out there. But you yeah. know what? If you run like that, you're forgiven a lot of yeah. things. You can't fault the effort. That was a very good job trying to get there. All right, Warriors first and goal from the three-yard line. Snyder in the pistol. And off to Jansen. He's in the zone. That's a Kaysenson touchdown. Adam Jansen. Good read there by the young freshman quarterback to give it to his big hoss and let him get his way in the end zone. So the Warriors go up 6-0 with uh, 3.58 to go first quarter. And, you know, I, I look, I'm looking around, guys. I'm liking what I'm seeing in the sky. I'm not seeing anything that looks like imminent rain. I see blue sky behind us. Blue sky. <laughs> I'm liking what I see on the field. I'm liking about everything except the people I'm here with. <laughs> Warriors going to go for two here. <laughs> Snyder keeps, rolls out this way, looking in the end zone. Oh, yes! It bounced off the defender and right into the hands of Corbin Wheeler. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure that's how they drew it up, but that's, that's the way it worked out. So we've got an 8-0 Warrior lead, and that was, um, yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> freshman to freshman there to convert the two-point try and, and cap off the, the first touchdown drive of the year for the Warriors. Well, and that's, yeah, I like that you point that out. You've got Corbin Wheeler receiving from um, Jack Snyder. Am I right on that? I, I hope to get, yeah, yep. I hate to get the kid's name wrong. <laughs> uh, great shot of the Warrior crowd. And, you know, earlier uh, I had mentioned to you, Roger, or I guess I was talking to Jay over here that the one much of a crowd, but they must have all been hiding. They, because have, they were waiting in their cars. They were smart. <laughs> all of a sudden, boom, we got a full stands here. Well, that was fun. Yeah, we might start to get used to calling those two names here in the next uh, couple years. As, That'd be all right. As those two uh, grow up and and uh, and really mature and fill out, put on some weight, they might be some some big time players for us here. They're going to be big time players this year, but down the road even bigger. I would uh, I would enjoy that. One more time, let me mention our first quarter sponsors: Eagle Communications, Prairie Land Partners, Marion National Bank. Here's Peyton Heidebrecht with the uh, kickoff for the Warriors. On the ground, what man just falls on it right there. It'll be on the uh, 40 or 38 yard line. That'll be first and 10 for the Wildcats. Uh, it, I don't, again, I, I hate to be so ignorant, but just, just the way I am. Uh, we did not kick, go for the extra point kick. We're, we're kicking squib kicks on the, so I'm assuming we probably don't have the, the big leg to that's the hunch. You know, last year we had uh, senior Griff Case right. with the with the square shoe, and boy, could he really whack it on the on the kickoffs, especially. And extra points were almost a given. Um, this year doesn't look like that's going to quite be the case. The Mountain Reds trying to make something happen again. The Warriors are in that backfield, and they bring him down. Another loss. That I think was number 55, Kyle Palak. I can't believe there's. 347 left in the game. That's the first time we've said Kyle Pollock's name today. <laughs> well, that's a good point. That's a good point. But, you know, maybe it's because his buddies just haven't given him an opportunity. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, Pollock, one of the really fine players on this squad, one of the senior leaders. Lots of about a yard and a half. We'll call it second and 12. Quarterback wants to pass, gets it away. Passes hauled in. Tackle out there by number 20, Brad Stone. And that will be a first down. Good play action pass there by the Mound Ridge Wildcats. Quarterback did a good job hiding the ball there on his hip. Delivers a good ball downfield. Very good. I'll move it out to the 45 yard line. That would be the Warrior 45. Oh, what a play! Give me a number. <laughs> oh, gee, <laughs> just as I about had the number, he went to the replay. 
Is that Adam Shalane, number 60? I think it is. It is. Adam Shalane, boy, that is how you draw it up. You don't just sack them. You sack them, strip the ball, and recover and the recover fumble. it. Wow. That's like an unassisted triple play. <laughs> <laughs> Warriors take over on the Mound Ridge side of the 50, 47-yard line. Danson with the carry, and he's going to maybe lose the yard. They had him in the backfield. Bryce Schultz checking in, giving the play to yeah. the young quarterback, Jack Schneider. Bryce, a sophomore. Uh, Mason Peterson, uh, also a sophomore there. Doing some rotation there with those plays. Warriors with the shift. Dancing again with the carry. Nice run. Good positive run there to get it into kind of a third and medium, give you a chance to pick up the first down here and keep the keep the drive going. We're going to have third and uh, just about five to go. And uh, I don't know, Roger, I, the way the Warriors have dominated on defense, I might, if I don't get it here, I may just go for it. Well, on I think as down. you get into plus territory a little bit, your, your mindset changes. And obviously we're not kicking field goals into the wind and the fact that we may not have the, the kicker to do it. Right. Um, so I think you get, even if you only pick up a couple here, you, you consider it. That's, that will change yeah, things. That was Snelling with the carry. And boy, there was just nothing. That play was never there. And I think, Roger, that that's to be expected, too, when you've got so many young players at so many positions. One of the I was listening to a pro talk on the radio the other day, and a former pro, and he was talking about that with rookies in the NFL, uh, they can be fantastic, but they're not generally consistent. No. And one play, from play to play, you get a, a different result, and it's just you know, getting the feel for it, getting in the action. Now you would have to assume that if that's the case in the NFL, it would be true at the high school level. And, yes. And then some. There's the kick. And Mount Ridge stays away from it, takes a really nice warrior roll. Good bounce inside the 20. Good job making the most out of the, the wind in your face, getting a good punt off and getting a positive warrior roll. About a minute to go in this quarter. The quarter's really flown along here. It sure has. Not many stoppages. We've only had the, the, the well, we had two flags on one play. That's the only <laughs> stoppage. Only well, had two penalties, but they happened on the same that's, play. So. You know, that speeds things up. <laughs> Very efficient officiating crew. <laughs> well, Uncle Gene bought us a pizza from the, the uh, concession stand before the game. I think it had some sawdust in it. It was not the best pizza I'd ever had, but it was better than the nothing we had before then. It's starting to fight back on me a little bit, I think. Hand off to the <laughs> tailback, and he's just pounded under. He got to the line of scrimmage. Well, yeah, he actually gained a little, but it wasn't yep. it wasn't much, not under much. a yard gain. You know, I, I'd look I'd look from an offensive standpoint here for them maybe to take a shot. You know, you've got, obviously you're deep in your own territory, but you've got the, the wind at your back, at least for another play. Um, I, I'd like to see them go to the air here, and I hope the Warrior defense is expecting it and ready for it. You know, Roger, I think that's a good idea. Uh, the only real offensive success they've had so far has been through the air. Absolutely. And so why not take a shot out here? They've only got one man out on the right side. He's going up against Baldwin. Or, I'm sorry, against Stone. Pump fake, ball away. It's pulled in. Uh, yeah. Late hit there. It wasn't anything egregious. Stone was just he, taking him out. but He knows that he's, he was headed off the field, I think, before the sub was even coming in for him. Patterson or Peterson comes in. That was almost identical to the last uh, big positive play that Mound Ridge had. Yes. Little play action pass, roll the quarterback to his arm side and, and let him, athletic kid, he doesn't mind throwing on the run, obviously. So. Yep. And that's a, that's a big gainer for them, and they're going to have an opportunity to run another play with the wind helping them. Yeah, that stops the clock with, I can't tell if that's a 15 or a 16, but it's not going to make much difference. Let's call it 16 seconds left to go in the half, and so they'll definitely have a, at least one more yep. play here. I said the half, the quarter. Quarterback under center puts the man in motion. He wants to throw again. And again, lots of pressure. 
They can't corral him. He's going to make a nice gain out of oh, that. Oh, there was a comeback block there. I don't know who it was, but my goodness. <laughs> Roger, uh, I don't think there's any way that they are going to be able to be successful dropping back and setting up. The, man's, the quarterbacks are going to have to throw on the run at all times. And obviously we didn't get that to... Didn't get that shot. They've got to keep him moving. I don't, I don't think there's any way he can just drop straight back. They've yeah. got to roll him. Obviously, he's shown he's he's good throwing to his arm side. That time they rolled him away from that side right. of the field. We'll see. I mean, they're, yeah, they're he didn't throw it, so we don't know if he throws as well. But I mean, he ran it. So and here's a new quarterback in the game. And we have uh, five seconds to go. This will be the last play of the first quarter. Now this is a straight drop back. Warriors are rushing again. He gets it away. That's all thrown with the arm. And now, oh! oh. <laughs> Seth had too much time. I think Stilling saw that coming uh, too long. His eyes were lit up for way too long. <laughs> you know, something just to, to conclude that first quarter. Yeah, this is our quarterly report, so have a, take away, Casey. Just, <laughs> just, just from a, a Mound Ridge offensive perspective, you know, they've gone, they haven't had much success running the ball. They've had maybe one or two positive plays. The success they've had is rolling the quarterback number number two, uh, the Kyle Stokey. Right. He's been rolling to his right, throwing well on the run, and they've been running that out of that wing T kind of wishbone set. And then two plays they've run, they've brought in number Odie. seven, Odie, and they've spread it out into kind of a Steve Spurrier old Florida Gator fun and gun, mm -hmm. but they haven't had any success with that. I don't think he's as mobile right. as a Stukey kid. I think they need to stick to their bread and butter and, and keep him on the move and let him roll and throw. I'm going to assume that Odie must have, uh, and this is the St. Luke Hospital quarterly report, uh, I'm going to assume Odie just has the bigger arm, and they just wanted to go as deep as they could go with the way I think that they're that, back. The, well, that was the way you know, I kind of looked at it. There was a receiver way downfield. He was well covered, but that looks like kind of the, what they're trying to do. Drop him straight back, heave it down the field if you've got one-on-one -on -one coverage and take your chances. Yep. Um, well, let's uh, take a moment here before we get to our second quarter. Uh, let's. Uh, we'd ask you to please play, pay close attention as you hear these words from some of our sponsors. And Marion Kiwanis Club, dedicated to providing service to children and local communities. Since 1923, Marion Kiwanis have worked for our community. Come join us. You can help. MCTV reminds you to support our sponsors. They make these broadcasts possible. Marion Pharmacy became a franchised Health Mart Pharmacy in 1984. As a full-line pharmacy, we accept most all major insurance plans, including Medicare D plans for seniors. We have been offering flu shots for the past couple of years and will continue to do so in the future. They offer a full line of durable medical equipment for both rental and purchase. They also have a Kodak picture printing machine, a full line of Hallmark cards, giftware, and toys for tots. And Marion High School boosters, financially, emotionally, and in all ways possible, the MHS boosters support the students of Marion High in all of their activities. Contact the high school to join them and boost the Warriors. MCTV reminds you to support our sponsors. They make these broadcasts possible. Carlson's is a full-service grocery store, proudly serving the community for more than 20 years. They feature fresh meat and produce, an outstanding deli featuring daily specials and freshly smoked meats and a bakery. They also offer propane exchange, DVD rental, and utility payments through Western Union. They can even take care of your catering needs. They have recently remodeled their interior, including new frozen section and bakery managers during the past year. We want to thank all of our fine sponsors, and we'll be showing you some messages throughout the, the course of the game. And uh, we are ready to begin the uh, second quarter now. We want to thank Casey for that quarterly report. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was one of his best. Yeah, you know, I try to fill in when we're, we're missing a, a key part to our crew. All right. Third and about a foot for Mound Ridge. Ball on the Warrior, 41. Oh, ball's, ball's on, on the, the ground. ground. I think the Warriors have that fumble. Yes, they do. There it goes. There we go. We got the call. So the defense holds. Yes, yes. 
Cade Harms came out of the bottom of the pile on that one. Big okay. number 63. <clears throat> Another one of those younger players that uh, I, I look. I, I figured Cade might be a player for us at some point. Didn't know if he'd be doing it at the sophomores. Didn't mark him. That was my bad. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be the first one. Sorry. No, Mike. it will not. It's a, well, I already know it's not the first one. <laughs> First and 10 Warriors now from the 43. Snyder keeps. We're going to get up to about the 45. It's the first one. It won't be the last one. Oh, thank there you go. Yeah, you go I had right. to clarify. I had to yeah. get a play in. To... Tell you what, <laughs> you have a way with words. <laughs> Our uh, second quarter sponsors are Marion Pharmacy, Triple R Hauling, and Shelter Insurance. Oh, it's, did we have a timeout? No. no. Gene put up the timeout sponsor. He totally, he discombobulated me. <laughs> Tampa State sponsors our discombobulation of the announcers. <laughs> All right. That doesn't take much either. No, it doesn't. Second and a short eight. Oh, my. Hand off to Jansen, and he has stood up in the backfield. Wow. Good penetration there by the Mound Ridge defensive line. That was number 77 for Mound Ridge coming in, and uh, that's Caleb Fry. He's uh, just a sophomore, but the scouting report uh, indicates that their coach says, well, here we have a Tampa State Bank timeout. Their coach says that uh, although he's just a sophomore and has a lot to learn, their coach thinks that by the time he graduates, let me see, let me get the quote right here. He will be the best offensive lineman that uh, the Mound Ridge coach has uh, had the opportunity to coach. That's what his coach is predicting. So As a we'll sophomore, see. you know, he's a big kid. He's shown flashes already tonight. I, I see where that coach is thinking. Now, obviously, that was he was not playing offensive line on that play. But no. I, if at a small school, if you're the best offensive lineman that a coach has had the chance to coach, you're probably going to be okay on defense. More than likely, too. you're going to be one of the better defensive linemen, too. It'll be third down and 10. And um, Gene is putting up the touchdown sponsor because he says he forgot to put it up when we had the touchdown. Uh -huh. Actually, Gene, you did put it up. So you thought you were wrong, but you weren't wrong. You were right. Yeah. I thought he was just calling this next play. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're going <laughs> to third and 10, but War Gene's going all the way. Snyder wants to pass. He gets to the way. That's out there. And it's pulled in. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, Mason Peterson. And if he had gone all the way, I would have called Gene a genius. <laughs> good play action fake there from Jack Schneider. And Mason Peterson had a step on the DB, did a good job there getting behind the last level of the defense for a big gain, get him down inside the red zone. Well, you know, Mason's another one of these sophomores. I think the fact that he out there like that, that wide open, it's going to be awful easy to freak out and drop that ball. The fact he hauled that in is yeah, pretty impressive. Absolutely. All right, Warriors down to the 20-yard line of the Wildcats, first and 10. And off to Snelling, right at the middle of the field. Oh, Snelling brought down hard, but he's right on the goal line. Got a flag back here. Looks like it could be in the holding area. Yeah. Block in the back. Well, that'll bring back that great play, and the uh, Warriors have shot themselves in the foot a couple of times here. They uh, have an 8-0 lead. They had two big penalties down on, on big gains down near the goal line. Uh, but, you know, first, first game of the season, you kind of expect that in a way. You do. It's obviously a coaching staff's going to tell you it's still not acceptable, but you, you anticipate it a little bit. Yeah, know, no way the coach is going to tell you in the game film, oh, never mind. Yeah. But the fact that we've had, with this many young players, the, the uh, few penalties we've had, I'm impressed. Yes. Well, that's a handoff to Jansen into the line. Not much there. You know, I don't know that this Mound Ridge defense is going to let Adam do a whole lot. They seem to be kind of clogging the middle up. He he had a nice run in the first quarter, um, but you know, I think they're gonna they're gonna make some of the younger players, both the quarterback uh, Snyder under center and some of the guys out on the wings. I think they're gonna make them make the plays. If they continue to do what they've done early in this game, then it will open up Big Adam Jansen for later in the game. 
Snelling back at the tailback behind Jansen now. It's Peterson out on the right side of the formation. Hand off to Snelling. Snelling stays on his feet. Not, makes a nice run out of what wasn't much. Good hard run there. Feet never stopped moving, driving for everything that he could. Get into about a third and what, six or seven? Yeah, I'd say about that. It's kind of hard to tell from this angle. They're calling it third and seven on the scoreboard. Ball's on the 16 yard line, so I would think that uh, Warriors are probably in four down territory no matter what here. Yep. Three receivers, two right, one left. Snyder pitches, that's back to Snelling. That's well defended. Wow. <clears throat> Snelling may get a yard on that. May, may, I think they're going backwards. I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong yard line. <laughs> yeah, they went backwards quite a bit. Second or fourth and nine. Well, no reason not to go for it. Worst case scenario, you give them a, the length of the field to go to do anything to you, and they'll be going against the wind now. Jacob Baldwin split to the top of the screen, maybe look to get him a pass. And yeah, Snyder <laughs> did not have a chance to get that one away. He went yep. down hard and fast. Yep. Good penetration there from the Mound Ridge defensive line to, to force the turnover on downs. So far, I've liked, though, the composure I'm seeing out of the, of, uh, the young quarterback. I have as well. I, I think his, his decision-making has been very good. It has. Um, he's put a couple balls right on the money. Um, that one, you know, obviously he's getting hit while he throws. Right. Uh, that's a throw that maybe, as we talked about, as he gets a little, a little stronger, he stands in the pocket. Maybe he can shake that guy off, reset, deliver the ball. So the ball now on the 19-yard line will be first and 10 Mound Ridge, headed the opposite direction. Down to uh, just over eight minutes to play in the half. Handoff goes over the left side. Not much of a gain. Kyle Palak and another defensive lineman there on the stop. I couldn't see who that was. I'm going to give him a yard, second and nine. As the uh, crowds have all settled in, we have good crowds on both the Marion and Madrid side. Great night for a high school football game and a pretty darn good game here. 8-0, Warrior lead. Madrid's pass, that was behind the man. And again, there was pressure out there, and that was number 83. I think it was 63. 63. Kate, Kate Harms. Man. Yeah, Kate Harms in with applying the pressure. And, Forced the quarterback to throw fast, and he uh, he was high and wide. Yeah, that was a, a quick quick drop and a hitch by the receiver, and even that didn't have time to get it off with Cade draped all over him. That probably was the thing that worried me the most, Roger, as we went into this season. Was I've been thinking, how are we going to replace the defensive lineman? And, yeah, uh, you lose you, a guy like Morgan Wheeler last year, who yeah. was just a menace yeah. on both on both lines of scrimmage, um, offensively and defensively. But so far, so good for the Warriors. Wheeler and Myers, and I mean, they were we lost yeah. some good offensive linemen. Get a procedure penalty here on Mound Ridge. Push them back and make it a third and was a third and long into a third and a little longer. Yeah, third and fourteen now. I wish I'd have worn my boots. I never would have thought that I'd have regretted wearing my, my tennis shoes. <laughs> <laughs> these, these aluminum planks that we're standing on are cold. They're not warm. Gene, can you get us some heated floors Yeah, we want floors heated, up here? heated floors. <laughs> Quarterback under pressure. He's got some running room around the left side. Warriors drag him down. He's going to be short of the first down, but a nice gain on that play. Well, it looks like a little little bit of a broken play. It looked like he wanted to roll out, roll to the left and, and throw, and he kind of cut it back immediately and then just headed upfield. He had pressure in the backfield there before he had a chance really to make yep. anything happen. Fourth and four, and uh, Mound Ridge is uh, in punting formation. Sneth, Sneth, Sneth. Sneth, Sneth, Sneth Selling, or how about <laughs> Seth Snelling deep for the Warriors? Oh, high snap, pulled down. Uh, 
Uh, we're gonna, <laughs> Snelling waited until the last minute, scooped that thing up, and uh, my first thought was, well, okay, I have no problem with that, but you're not going to get a, a yard out of it. But the, on the, um, well, we'll watch it right here, but I think it's a face mask that's going to get the Warriors a nice game. Face mask or a horse collar of some kind they're going to get him for, so that <laughs> decision to pick it up and not gain anything is going to gain him an additional 15, it looks like. Personal foul face mask, so they'll march it off. <laughs> Well, they mark off 15. The Warriors have great starting field position on the uh, Mound Ridge side of the 50. I'd like to see him take a shot here. You got the got the wind helping you. Your young quarterback has shown that he can deliver the ball downfield on the money. I like a little play action pass here and, and try to hit one of our good receivers. Got Baldwin split high to the top of the screen. He's a nice big target for him. 6.39 to go in this half. That's a pitch outside. That's going to get drugged down. There may be a loss on that play. Corbin Wheeler on the receiving end of that. Looked like they just tried to throw a little bubble to him out there on the on the right flank. Corbin, another one of those freshmen. He's listed at 5'9", 143. I have to say I never thought I'd see the day when a Wheeler was playing a uh, skill position. <laughs> Many years of Ed Wheeler and I going around and around about uh, linemen and backs. <laughs> now his grandson has come to the dark side. <laughs> Second and 12. And off to Jansen, right up the gut. Good blocking and a nice run. The entire offensive line was there when Jansen went down. In other words, the push was that Very good. Very good. Mount Ridge had a couple guys in the backfield, but they were past the play at the, right. the, the mesh point there with the quarterback and the fullback. So that, with that nice gain, it brings up a third and two on the Mount Ridge 35. Warriors shift around, Snelling now the tailback behind Jansen. Snyder from the shotgun or pistol. He pops it right over the middle and that's hauled in. That'll be a first down for the Warriors. Another little tight end pop pass to big Jake Baldwin there to keep the chains moving and keep the drive going. You know, Baldwin, uh, we mentioned before, I mean, he's a senior. He has been a JV quarterback for a couple of years. Good athlete. Had every reason to expect this would be his year at quarterback. And uh, the Warriors are making a great use of his talent. And I'll tell you one thing about the Baldwin boys. There's no way they're going to have a bad attitude. No, they're uh, not going to have a bad attitude. They're not going to make many mental mistakes. Uh, right. Very, very intelligent kids. And um, I, he could probably play any position on the field. Well, and before <laughs> the season's over, he might he play might. a lot of them, yeah. Hand off to Jansen. And I, I think to some extent, Roger, you made the reference earlier that there's not going to be a lot of running room for him. I would, if I were Mound Ridge, and I know what we had last year and I know what we lost, I'd be keying on Jansen. Well, I'd be I mean, thinking, well, that's probably all the guys. Of the guys that were, you know, the offensive production for the most part last year, he's the one guy coming back that right. was really the, the big key contributor. Take him out. Take him, not take him out, but take him out of the equation as right. far as key on him pinch and, and make other make guys somebody make else beat you Absolutely. and I think that's what they're doing unfortunately they're finding that maybe there are some other yeah, guys there are there. second and nine for the Warriors from the 24 that's a pitch to Snelling and nicely defended loss on the play is going to make it third and we'll have to wait for him to get it spotted here looks like about 13 Kyle Palick on the sideline talk, side talking to the coaching staff before going back in with his defense. I've noticed that he's been doing a lot of communicating. I'm assuming he's kind of the quarterback on that defense. Or I mean, I'm sorry, the offensive side. He's not the quarterback of that. But yeah. when he was on defense, he appeared to be quarterbacking the defense. He's one of those guys. He's like having another coach on the field. Third and 13. Snyder keeps. Got Snelling trailing. He gets driven out of bounds on the far side. He's going to pick up about five to six yards on that. We'll have to again wait till they get it set. This kind of opens the playbook up here for you on fourth down. Yeah, you know, fourth, fourth and, and five. five. You could you could run it with your big 
your big fullback. You could you could roll out the young quarterback. You can drop them straight back, even throw one of those little pop passes that they've done uh, a couple times already and done it very well. Warriors again holding to that 8-0 uh, lead, 3-14 to go in the half. Would love to get another score on the board here before they go in for the, the halftime. Snyder wants to pass. That's intended. Oh, and pulled in. Mason Peterson with a touchdown, and he's in the zone. A case and son touchdown. A great play action fake there from Jack Snyder. Pulls it up, had a guy right in his face, and delivered a strike down the right field. Right there. Oh, he took a hit and put it right on the money. Great play. Oh, my. I am I am liking freshman to sophomore uh, <laughs> action here. He got some uh, spirit on the sidelines there. You know what really impresses me about that is just he stood in there, yeah. took one on the chin, yeah. and said, you know what, if I'm going to get hit in the mouth, I'm going to throw a touchdown while I do it. Makes it 14-0. Warriors again going for two. We will probably see a lot of that this year. Snyder to pass. He gets Dude. it away out there. <laughs> Snelling wisely picked it up because if somebody said it was a lateral, that could have been bad. But anyway, nice uh, nice way to go out of the half. i got three minutes to go, but if we can hold here and go in at 14-0, I'll take that. <laughs> Mound Ridge has got a... Uh, Nice facility here. They got a uh, nice rubberized track. Their stands are what, I mean, I, I have to admit, I'm gonna brag a little bit. I always love seeing Warrior Stadium. You just don't see many small towns with a great big concrete uh -huh. stadium like that, but they have nice stands and the uh, uh, restroom and uh, facilities for the concession stand and stuff are, are very nice. They got a good setup. Yep. But they don't have numbers on the field and that really bothers <laughs> me. <laughs> if you're not gonna give us numbers, give us Yard marks, you know, give us the little hashes here on the side so yeah, we can see what's yeah, going well, on. Yeah, at least that would be nice. Yeah. yeah, so I could say, okay, there's five yards in between there instead of saying, well, they're on the whatever. <laughs> they're on They're on the 42 to 44 yard line. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. <laughs> Based on my failing eyesight. <laughs> Warriors line up to kick off once again, this time with the wind at their back, although the, if it's like the kickoff we had before, I don't think it matters I, uh, where the wind is. your it. back or not, it's just like playing golf in the wind. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you skull it off the tee. Peyton Heidebrack with the kick. Takes a bounce. It's going to be fielded, and they'll try to try the return, but there's nothing there. That was kind of what you want. If the ball bounces around like that, there's a chance somebody doesn't field it, and you pick yep. the thing up. Yeah, you never know. It gets gets up and over at one level and lands short of the other level. Maybe you get a guy down there, and he kicks it around for a second, and yeah. then you're in business again. You can put another touchdown on the board before the half then you're really, really going into the halftime strong. Yeah, and you really send Mound Ridge in reeling. So, yep. I don't know, three minutes isn't very much time, but uh, if the Warriors could get a quick, either a turnover or just a quick three and out. Yeah, Warriors have, uh, I believe, two timeouts left. So you could look to try to make a stand here, especially if you get an incomplete pass in these next couple downs to help you and almost give you an extra timeout. And you are correct. We did call a timeout earlier. I had missed that. And there's just nothing going in the middle of the formation. There's going to be maybe a very short gain there. And they're not even using the, uh, or moving the ball marker, so it's second down and 10. Shalene coming out of the uh, defensive formation for the Warriors. He's a big kid. Boy, it's glad to see him healthy this year. Exactly. <clears throat> Come around this side, and again, the Warriors just strung that out, strung it out, and they didn't go to the sideline, but uh, they just got a lot of horizontal movement, yep. nothing vertical. 
Yeah, talking about Shalene being healthy, I, I couldn't help but notice. I mentioned Braden Fahey earlier as one of the seniors, and Braden was up in the press box with us a lot last year. He'd had an injury and never mm -hmm. really got the suit up. And I was dismayed to see him on the sidelines in a wheelchair. Yeah, he had, a, I believe, a hip procedure done earlier this week. And uh, just one of those unfortunate things for, for, a, for a young man not be able to play, you know, his senior year when I'm sure he was really looking forward to it. Third and eight for Mound Ridge. And, man, that was taken down in the backfield. That was Jacob Baldwin, I think, again. Loss on the play, fourth down. I'm a little surprised that the Warrior coaching staff isn't going to use one of the two remaining timeouts here. You're I would gonna, have considered it. You're going to get the ball back with about a minute to play, maybe a little under a minute. You know, maybe you hope for a good return here. You're going to get a positive field position. You're going to have the ball hopefully around midfield, so maybe they don't think they – they need to use one now, and they can save two timeouts save for, for, for the minute yeah. drill or whatever you want to call and, it. And that's the question is, do you want to save the 30 seconds now or do you want to save the timeouts yeah. and, you know, use them when you need them? It's, uh, and and Mount, who Ridge, knows? Mount Ridge is going to milk it here. Um, I mean, they may even take the, the delay a game, and it looks like they're just going to wait it out, but they're going to use a timeout of their own. But they get it down to, to 49 seconds when that last play ended. There was about a minute and a half, minute and 20. Minute 30, yeah. I think, yeah. The, uh, I, I will, the uh, coach was standing there right by the official on the far sideline, and they just like to see in the NFL when they're, they, they, you tell me when it's about done. As, as soon as this, uh, the back judge over here started the, the five-second countdown, because no play clock's here. Right. Um, as soon as he started doing the countdown, he let him do a couple arm waves, and then he was right there in the official's ear to call the timeout. So the other side of the argument is, and that, yeah, you could have, um, at about 40 seconds that you don't have now. Yeah. But, of course, you're not going to get those 40 seconds back. But if you've got an extra timeout in your pocket and you're on the two-yard line and the clock is ticking down, there's four seconds to go, yeah. you're going to be glad you had that timeout. Well, so and it's and a, it gives you that option, too. Say they, you know, on first down, hit a big play down the field and they get inside the, you know, 10-yard line. It gives you a chance to maybe try to run. Try to do a run play. That's true. Hit, hit Jansen, you know, on a little belly play right in the middle. And if he doesn't get to the end zone, you still have that timeout. Still got the timeout. Yep. yep. Comes the punt. Good kick. Yeah, that's a really good kick. Snelling had uh, kind of crept up. I don't think he expected much. And as it is, it's going to be Warrior first down on the 31 yard yeah, line. In, into a pretty stiff breeze. I, yeah. I was surprised. Uh, I think Mound Ridge coaching staff is going to be very happy with their punter in that situation to kind of bail them out of, of, of pretty bad field position there. I think it kind of changes some of the uh, way it, you're going to call plays yeah, here. It changes the dynamics pretty. Oh, we've got a penalty. I missed that. There's a flag on the far sideline. Oh, there it is. And uh, there was an illegal procedure penalty called, apparently, that we missed. So uh, we'll see if maybe we can uh, just getting ready to say that changed the dynamics of the whole end of this half. The, the, only, the only bad thing about that on the Warrior side is yeah. you ran 10 seconds off yeah, the clock. Yeah, the clock didn't stop. <laughs> yeah. We're down to 39 seconds to go. You know, they're... Um, snaps their long snaps are just like moon shots as long as they take to get back and as quick as we are there that's where i was going with that roger is we got a chance to block that and yeah yep. i get the scoop and score <laughs> <laughs> who recovered that i didn't see uh, did we already a, do the replay it, team? it was a big body it looked like I think it, uh, this is just a shot in the dark. I saw 58 running off the field. That's uh, uh, Tyler Pallick. Uh, I looked oh, like, little brother, looked yeah. like he was the guy that, that came out of that with the ball. 32 seconds to go. We're on their five-yard line. 14-0, Warrior lead. And we got a penalty. Snyder keeps. He's going to come up short, but we have a, a penalty from the – Looks like a procedure penalty, yeah. illegal shift. Illegal shift call. Gets you to the 10 yard line. You got, you know, 26 seconds left. But again, we had the timeout debate a little while ago. You've got two in your pocket. So yeah. you got two so you, that you can, um, like you said, you want to just hit the tight end on a five yard pass. And if he makes it to the one, that's okay. Or yep. you want to tuck it and run, do anything you want. Yep.
Snyder hands off to Snelling. Snelling works his way in the middle of the field. Exactly what we talked about. Warriors called timeout with 17.8 to go. And I think we're down, what, to the five? That's Snelling made a good spin move there right at the line of scrimmage to, to take something or to get something out of nothing. <laughs> I'm not sure what Gene was showing a replay of there. It's a replay of the pregame warm-up. <laughs> the replay of our pregame show, yes. <laughs> it's for those folks that were sitting out in their car during pregame warm-ups. Here we go. There it is. Good now, spin oh, there's your there. spin move, yeah. yeah. And it is the five-yard line, so it'll be second and goal from the five. We got 17.8 seconds to go, and the Warriors have one timeout left. We have uh, had a couple of opportunities for scores that we have not capitalized on. Of course, we I'm not complaining. I like the 14-0 lead, but you don't want to end the uh, half down here without getting in the end. Well, especially on a, on a big change of possession. You get the block punt, gets you down there inside the 10-yard line, and, and to come away with nothing uh, would be disappointing. Yeah. You know, we've still got some time left. We're going to be able to run a couple plays here. Where do you shift people around? Snyder wants to throw corner of the end zone. Oh, nicely done. Broken up there. That was intended for number nine. Was that nine out there? I think there? that no. was three. Jacob three. Baldwin. That's Baldwin. I like that idea. Get your, your big uh, six foot three senior in the corner of the end zone and give him a 50 50 ball and see if he can go make a play for you. Third and five. That was just very well defended. Opportunity here. Uh, you know, third and five, obviously five to go to get into the end zone. You could take a take a shot here with Adam Jansen in the middle, give him the ball, see if he can pummel his way in there. You still got that last timeout sitting in your pocket. From the shotgun, Snyder wants to throw again. Right across the middle, and that's Peterson. That's a touchdown. He's in the zone. <laughs> Excellent job there. Again, same connection we had on the previous touchdown drive. Um, Schneider on the quick slant to Peterson, hits him right in stride and gets in for a Warrior touchdown. So as he slices across and catches that, pulls it in, and absolutely showing no case of sophomore nerves whatsoever. No. And Snyder, we've already remarked on, is certainly not scared to be back there as a freshman. Warriors go up 20-0. Two-point conversion attempt. Snyder keeps, tries to get around the outside. Will he have room? He, he does. He's in the zone. Well, we got 9.6 seconds, and the Warriors have a 22-0 lead in this ball game. Good read there by the freshman, and he sees he can get to the, the far pylon and does an excellent job of turning it on and kicking it into that extra gear to, to pick up the conversion. Roger, the... Um, the shot that we've got on our monitor here, um, it, it appears lighter than it does on the field itself. I think it's really dark, especially down in that end of the field. I don't know if they've got some lights out or. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Gene says it's just that we've got good equipment, but. You know, I'm looking up from us at these lights and there's a couple out on this standard and there's a couple out on the far standard. Um, you know, that could have something to do with it. I don't really know. Now you got me dizzy. I'm looking at him. I'm going to fall off. Don't fall off, off the scaffolding. scaffolding. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to something while you look up. I don't. Staring into the light, standing <laughs> on the top of scaffolding. That's a good plan. <laughs> Can I, can I hold something metal in the lightning, too? Don't talk about lightning <laughs> Not while we're up here. Warriors with the kickoff. And we need uh, to have one of our camera guys get a picture of the sunset out there. It's in the pretty, business. isn't it? Let's get back to the kick. Squib. Oh, off the man. That's a live ball. Hey, he picks it up. And he gets brought down. And that's the end of the half. Well, 
let's go to our quarterly report and and i i guess what we can say here we haven't been on the sideline like casey always is roger but uh, what i guess i would do would be to reiterate what we talked about before the first half of the first game of the season i am just shocked at how the freshmen and sophomores have performed i'm not taking anything away from the kids that we expected to perform no i i think it's you have to be extremely pleased, uh, both from uh, obviously the fans in the stands, the, the coaches on the sideline. But I think is uh, the kids have to be pleased. Yes. To get out and, and to get off to such a good start. And, and yeah, we had the, the hiccups with a couple penalties here and there. But to, to be able to push through that and to, to have some success and to kind of taste it, especially early on, right. I think it, it sets the sets the tone not just for this game but possibly you know moving into the, the later weeks in the season and maybe getting into the postseason as well I, I think that's absolutely correct you go into this game and we come out here and uh, make a lot of mistakes and the kids come away not sure they can handle varsity opposition and, and it's going to affect you for a long time yeah. and at least it's going to make the job hard for the coaches to turn that around yeah. now we got a half to go a lot of bad things could happen but uh, i think we've established that uh, some kids have every right to feel like they belong on the varsity playing field i think so and i think they've they've proved it thus far and i think it's going to be you know a lot of the same moving forward with that that young group that's uh, been out and you know it's young kids at the skill positions too yes you know, out there making plays uh, in space you know catching balls um out you know with a chance to score a touchdown you know young kid like you said they could panic drop it absolutely cough it up and then you've got a kid under center that's uh delivering strikes with guys in his face something you'd expect out of and we saw it last year with with taylor heidebrack running the show as a senior and a kid that had a lot of reps he'd stand in there and deliver a ball get hit in the chest and make the completion but you have to be extremely pleased doing that as a freshman as, as jack right. Snyder is absolutely well, we'll call that it for our St. Luke Hospital quarterly report. We would invite you to pay attention to these words from our sponsors, and we'll be back with the second half. Hannaford Abstract and Title Company provides abstracts of title and title insurance for homeowners and mortgage lenders. They also provide real estate closings for your transactions. Why do you need title insurance? For most Americans, our home is the single largest financial investment we will ever make. Having a clear title is important to the sale and purchase of your home. Your title insurance policy is your assurance that the home you are buying is protected from any title problems now and down the road. Tampa State Bank is one of the few banks in Marion County still locally owned. We offer the full range of banking services, checking, savings, time deposits, consumer, commercial, and real estate loans, escrow services, credit and debit cards, internet banking, new touchscreen drive-up ATM, night depository, and safe deposit boxes. Our friendly, courteous officers and staff will continue to provide the excellent service to our customers in 2012 that they have been used to since 1901. Jerry Cady Agency is a full-line insurance agency specializing in crop and hail insurance. They also carry farm, home, auto, life, and annuities. Their goal is to continue to offer quality insurance products while maintaining our commitment to always providing the best service possible to each and every customer. Welcome to Marion County Ace Hardware, located at 1228 Commercial in Marion. We have all your supplies for painting, lawns, pets, fishing supplies, and keys. We also have stock lawn mowers and parts with a large selection of craftsman tools and also, don't forget the candy. We are open seven days a week for your shopping convenience, even if you only need a nut or a bolt. We are back and ready to start the second half. The Warriors kicking off. The Warriors will have the wind at their back in this third quarter. And a 22-point cushion to work with. Now, you don't want to see any lessening of intensity here in this second half, Raj. No, you don't. And that's one thing I think uh, with you got a lot of young kids playing. This game's far from over. Boy, a lot of that back would not go down out there. But that's, you know, one thing you may worry about with a young. You know, we're not a, a young team per se. We've got a lot of young kids contributing. We've still got some veteran players that I think will keep the intensity up and keep them moving along at the same pace they had the first half. But that's one thing you may want to watch is just 
how the intensity of some of the younger players is yeah. as we get into the second half. You make a good point because I don't think the Kyle Pallicks and the Seth Snellings and some of those other kids we've talked about, the Jacob Baldwins, are going to allow no. the kids to – you know, somehow check out thinking the no. game's won. And if it if it does happen, I, it won't happen for very long, I don't believe. Nice run coming right at you. Big gainer. Uh, he almost got flagged <laughs> for another one. That's. Yeah. <laughs> but Stone did a nice job. He, he pulled, pulled up. up. Brad Stone did the same thing on the far sideline, and he wasn't doing anything malicious in the first half, but it was one of those plays right at the boundary, and he, instead of pulling off like he just did, Went through him and, you know, he got the flag there, did a good job making the adjustment. With that big gain, Mound Ridge has some momentum. First and 10 on the Warrior 38-yard line. And, Mike, these lights are not very good. Thank our, you. Our cameras are doing an excellent job of not really displaying that. Yeah, it just <laughs> – here's the uh, – Oh, ball's on the ground. I think Mound Ridge got it. And that's nothing against the facility or anything like that, but these lights are, I mean, you can see shadows on the field of the players, and it's... Uh, what surprises me, Rod, is normally when you see uh, there's just a, uh, it's just a yellowy, dull It's not a bright, illumination. it's not a bright light. Uh, and normally when you see that, you're at a field where someone's still got, you know, wooden posts, and, and but these are nice. Uh, these are wooden posts. Oh. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> Man, from across the field, I was looking at the ones the other side. And I thought they were metal. Okay, yeah. With you see them places like this with wooden posts. <laughs> Here's the pass. Oh, behind the receiver. Had that been hauled in, Roger, he had the angle cutting right across. That would have been a big gain. He did. He had a pretty big cushion from the defensive back there, and Peyton Heidebrecht, the outside linebacker, was working that direction. But he had some room there to to make a man miss and make a big play. Third down and seven. That's a long seven for the Wildcats. They got one man split wide left. Everybody else in tight. Two slots. One running back with the slot man in motion now. Hand off to that fullback, and he gallops up the middle of the field for the first down, but there's a flag in the backfield. Flag in the backfield, and that's in the area of a hold. Roger, we talk about the uh, the uh, a chop block. Aha, uh -huh, okay. The uh, we talk about the picture looking brighter than the uh, than reality. You'd think, well, how could that be? But I was watching uh, the PGA golf tournament this year, and uh, they kept talking about how dark it was, how dark it was, and they then they said, you know, our cameras pull in more light than is really there. We're going to adjust it so you can see the way. It actually is in reality, and boom, it, it was, was dark. It all was of a dark. Sudden. That was at the the PGA Championship, yes. and they were playing until dark. <laughs> so there's a uh, a little bit of a payback for the uh, long gainers the Warriors have had called back, and I I'm not inferring. I don't mean when I say that that anything that the officials did wrong. Just fate. Yes. Third and twenty four for the Wildcats. And off again. This time they ride him down right at that line of scrimmage. He falls forward for a three, four yard gain, but it'll be fourth down and long. Fourth down and long, and I, I know you're chasing 22, but I think you have to punt here. Man, I tell you, it, it's going to be awful tough to go for fourth and 21. I know you're at midfield, but my goodness, Roger, if you don't get it, you could find yourself down 30 points. In a hurry. In a hurry. Uh, I mean, especially with the way that, that – uh, the Warriors have thrown the ball down the field. Um, man, this is a, a surprising call. Yeah, they are me. going for it. Pass play. It's caught. It's going to be short. Nice gain, but he's going to get back. Uh, he's going to be still eight yards short of the first down. Warriors will take over. You know, you take away the, the, the block below the waist penalty, and obviously that negated a long run, so we wouldn't be in this situation anyway, but that's a great play if you're looking at a, a fourth and eight. Yes. You know, you pick yeah, up, you hit the quick, quick hitter to the receiver like that, but on a fourth and 20, you're you're calling that play thinking, all right, we're going to get the eight to 10-yard completion, and he's going to break a tackle and go. Warriors did a good job in the open field of bringing him down and, and get the ball back. So Warriors now on their own 36 first down. 
Wheeler split, split out wide on the right side. Schultz down here, down low. Hand off to Snelling. And Seth's going to get a couple. So we'll have second down and eight as Peterson brings the play in from the sideline. Warriors continue to run shifts out of that set. Jansen with a carry. He refuses to go down, and I think he got the first I down so. with that last effort. You know, Mike, you mentioned uh, before before that uh, play, the Warriors shifting from the original set that they line up in. Yes. You know, you see it a lot on Saturdays, college football. You see it a lot on Sundays as well. Um, obviously, it's trickling down here, but I don't know that the Warriors have run a play from a set and not had some sort of shift or motion yet today. I I can't think of one off the top of my head, and maybe maybe I'm just not paying enough attention to stuff yeah, like that. But you, I, I've been watching the shifts and watching where guys are lined up and where they shift to. And it seems like every play there's something different. And watch now they're. No, they, no, they, no, they're no, I think it would have been great if they had just <laughs> stayed right there. Snyder keeps. Had some pressure in the backfield. He gets a corner turned. He's, that's a nice run. Had a late oh, flag. Oh, late there. flag. What was that? Um, I don't know if it was a face mask or an unnecessary roughness, unsportsmanlike, something like that. I, I I don't really know. It came from the guy that was spotting the ball right near the tackle, so I'm not quite sure what it was. It's about a five-yard gain on the play. We'll see what the penalty's going to do. Yeah, we're not really in a position to... <laughs> Gene's wanting the uh, players to move off the sideline so we can... There's some sort of personal foul, unnecessary roughness, something like that. I, I didn't I didn't happen to see it, but late hit or something. I think if it had been anything more, if it was a punch or something, we'd have seen a little bit more um, activity from the officials than that. So that gives the Warriors, of course, a, a first down and moves the ball down just outside the 30 yard line of the Wildcats. The Mound Ridge coach had walked pretty far out onto the field. He wants, I think, an explanation. Yeah, wants to know what happened. And I, I, again, we didn't see it, and that's all the way across the field for him. I'm sure he wants an explanation, Jay, too. Jay, can you get a shot over there, the officials and their coach? Too late. They already, whatever they said uh, seemed to satisfy him. And Casey Case has made an appearance. Casey is here. We're glad to see him. Not very many Warrior games over the last 20-some years have uh, taken place without Casey <laughs> being present. All right, first and 10, Warriors. Snelling with the handoff. And right up the middle oh, of the he's field. Go. Seth Snelling is in the zone with a Case and Son touchdown. He twists his ankle. It looked like he came up a little gimpy there. Looks like a basic little lead play here. You got Jansen leading the way with a kick out block and Seth Snelling cutting right off his backside right up the middle of the field. And Gene, let this run away. He went almost untouched. Just trying to see if there was there a hole he stepped in out in the... Uh... That, that's weird. I, it looked like he might have stepped in something. He had uh, a, he, maybe he has a cramp. He cramped up. He I said there were going to be no cramps today. You did. <laughs> I, the time you said that, I thought, what a fool. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. The last thing you'd want to do is have, because Seth, you know, you've got a little bit of that. And this is going to go way back to probably before you were born, but. Uh, Jim Kick and Larry Zonka with the Miami Dolphins back in the Bob Greasy 
uh, undefeated season days and so on. That they was had, before my time, but go on. Bit. Well, they had. But the, I'm, a, they, I'm a football historian a little bit. All right, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> they well, I, they were they were well. They had bottom line is this is not what they were called, but they were thunder and lightning in that they were they the big strong guy that yep. barreled through the middle, and then you got the fast guy yeah. who, uh, you know, runs away from people. Recent, uh, according to football media, was back USC had Reggie Bush, Lindell White. They were the thunder and lightning. Oh, nicely done from Snyder. <laughs> Snyder to, to Peterson, Peterson again. Peterson again. <laughs> My goodness. Those two are just becoming a tandem. Oh, and he fumbled the snap. And he stayed with the play, though, Roger. Well, stayed with this play, and again, with a guy in his face, delivering a ball that it gives your guy an opportunity to make a play for you. That puts the Warriors up 30-0. to zero. And anyway, that's the thing I would have hated to have lost Snelling here in the first game because with he and Jansen, you've got that, that kind of that one-two punch. Yeah, you got the, the guy, the bruiser, and then you've got the kind of, not a scat back by any means, but he's a, a little guy more of a slasher. Yeah. Yeah. Shifty, can, can get to the second level in a hurry, and... Um, you like that combination, and I'd like to see that combination run into, you know, the end of the season for these guys. Yeah. I have, uh, when we got here, we didn't know what we were going to do. We, we thought about trying to squeeze into the press box, but it's almost impossible with the equipment we have anymore to get in the press box the size of what Mound Ridge has, and only if we kicked all of them out would it work. I don't know if that'd go over so well. I don't think so, and but so we we built some scaffolding here and i am just between gene's work downstairs and the production part of it and he really is he's down below us now and jay smith up here doing what jay's done since 1963 and and danny with the uh, the close-up stuff i just think we got a pretty good production going there the only thing we need are some announcers <laughs> <laughs> oh well the royers do a nice job of that had the makings or the look of a return for a touchdown. The Warriors kept their pursuit up and brought uh, him down. Peyton Heidebrecht, the, the kicker, they're doing a great job kind of being the safety valve, and he was there to, to turn the ball carrier back in just a little bit and let his buddies come down and, and pick him up and, and keep him out of the end zone. It does, however, give Mound Ridge great field position here with 8.04 to go in the third quarter. They'll have the ball on the Warrior 30. Two, 33. You know, one thing uh, with that, that squib kick is your, your kickoff team gets down there and almost looked like they didn't have time to break down and get yeah. into their lane responsibilities, and then, bam, the guy's passed you. Exactly. I, I agree. Hand off around the left side. Going to get the ball down. Did it pop out? I think, did the Warriors recover the fumble? Uh, I think they're talking uh, Palak okay. put a helmet on that kid's chin strap and knocked it off. And oh, I, think, okay. I think they were just making a motion to he has to leave the game for a play. All right. Well, I saw that arm go out, and I thought they were nice gain. He is going to bring up second and four for Mound Ridge. The ball now just outside the uh, 25, about the 26-yard line. <laughs> knocked his chin strap off. That's a pretty good hit. <laughs> And off again, coming this direction. Ran through a couple of tackles. Oh, boy. Nice job. Was that Bryce Schultz that came in I think in it was. Good job there coming out of his DB spot for some run support. He's there. Bryce Schultz and 55. Palick. Palick, yeah. Palick's always around the big hits. Third down and two. Need to come back to live action. Gene Winkler. <laughs> he likes that replay he tool. Was, he was really liking that. He was having fun playing with that slow-mo. Gene's upset now. He came back, but they won't play. He could have shown that replay two or three more times. <laughs> yeah. well, the, the player's chin strap wouldn't, wouldn't hook. They had to have his... Teammates help him out. So third and two. The ball on the 25. Well, that's going to be close. Let's just have to see where they spot. Oh, we got a flag here coming in late from the defensive backfield. It's fourth down. So they did not pick up the first, at least not on the play itself. Yeah. 
flag came in for one of the the back judge, I think. <laughs> Penalties against uh, yeah, an illegal block penalty against Mound Ridge. Wow. And they would have been fourth and one, and this deep they probably would have gone for oh, it. So you've got to take this penalty. Yeah, absolutely. That's a they're gonna be, you know, fourth and a yard or so there. That's gonna be a no-brainer. For me, Roger, the, you could look at this one of two ways. Either there are no no-brainers or they're all no-brainers. <laughs> Because I'm calling them without a brain. <laughs> <laughs> Third and 11. Oh, the ball's, ball's on the ground. Down. Somebody's got it. They're trying to get up and score, but <laughs> we're not in the NFL. Jacob Baldwin with the fumble recovery. <laughs> Baldwin wanted to get up and run with it. Hey, give it a shot. So that takes care of any scoring threat from the Wildcats, and the Warriors now have the ball. What yard line are we on? Is that the 34? Now, see, if that was out on the field written, I'd know that we would know. that's the 35-yard line there. <clears throat> Snyder with a handoff to... Uh, I thought that was Jansen. <coughs> Jansen. Yeah, I bouncing thought, well, I thought off, it was Jansen, off bodies. but the way he was running, I thought, well, no, is that Snelling? Because <laughs> he was moving so quick. Nice run. It's going to pick up about eight. Yeah, closer to nine, really. We'll call it second and one. <clears throat> second call it a long one. Yeah, it's a long one. <laughs> But it's a short two. And off to Jansen again. He's got the first down, about five more. I think we're going to see a lot of that here as we get a little deeper into the third quarter. Uh, kind of Marion start to lean on him. Uh, let the big let the big back kind of come in there and just wear him out. Um, you know, we did we talked about their roster on the Mound Ridge side is a little smaller right. um, than ours, and you know depth and. Things like that may, at this point in the game, this is where they start to show up and really start to kind of rear their head. And, and you also just keep the clock moving. you yep. got a 30-point lead. You know, you do this. Uh, the clock doesn't stop like it does on an incomplete pass. And Snelling just lost his footing on yeah. that one. But anyway, the clock is still moving. The clock <laughs> is moving. <clears throat> Several years ago, I mean many years ago, we were playing, um, oh, my goodness, Rose Hill. And uh, we were playing there, and we had a 28 to nothing lead at halftime, and a lightning storm moved in, and they ended up suspending the game, and they, we had to go back the next day and, and replay uh -huh. it, or not replay it, but play from halftime on. And it was the shortest half in the history of football because Coach Tiroff just handed the ball off, handed <laughs> the ball off. Handed, we ended up winning 28-0. <laughs> There's Jansen with a carry. The bus ride down there probably took longer than Absol the actual half absolutely, of the game. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> That'll make it uh, give him about third and eight or so. Yeah, yeah, third and roughly eight. I know we want to keep the clock moving, but uh, as well as we've uh, shown that we can throw the ball, I think, uh, you know, kind of third and long here, I think you may, may see a ball get into the air. Well, first downs keep the clock moving, too. Absolutely. You know? They stop for a second. Well, they do stop for a second, <laughs> but then they start them again. They do. Oh, Snelling with the carry. There's a flag on the play. Snelling's going to have the first down. Let's see if it stands. I'm not optimistic. We're going to get a hold, I believe. I didn't see what lineman we got it on. That referee threw that flag very confidently right towards the offensive line. So that will be against the Warriors. You know, as we've kind of sung the praises of um, a lot of the younger people, I hope we've not been uh, shy of giving credit to the to the veterans. I think we, we certainly uh, have mentioned them as well. But uh, not only are Snyder and Peterson and, and Wheeler and some of those folks, but um, 
Boy, some of those young offensive and defensive linemen are performing Absolutely. just great. Snyder to pass. He's going long. The man's wide open if he can get there. Oh. Boy, that was that was a well-thrown ball. About one more step, and um, that's Baldwin. About one more step, and he's there. He had his man beat. Yeah, he had him beat like a he, drum. He had him beat, maybe a little a little more air underneath the throw. Or, yeah. But, again, you're but, talking a kid, the freshman kid in the first start in the varsity yeah. game. And that, that wasn't a poorly thrown pass not, by any means. No, it's not a at little, all. little off the mark, and, you know, that's going to happen. Warriors to punt. Snaps on the ground. Nicely fielded. Nice punt. Drives them back and takes a great warrior bounce. Don't let it go in the end zone, guys. <laughs> oh! He tried to, he pick, tried it to up. pick it up. I think the Warriors are going to have the football. Warrior they football! That, that was the dumbest thing. Bryce, Why would he do Bryce that? Schultz right down there. Uh, as a coach, I, I can't imagine what they're going to say to him. And he's hurt. He's hurt. I'd be real hurt I'd if be, I were. I think I'd ask him to take me straight to the locker room. <laughs> I have seen players successfully have the situation where the ball's about to be blown dead, uh, Tampa State Bank timeout here, injury timeout. Ball's about to be blown dead, and the defenders are gathering in to watch it just go dead, and then the guy snaps it up. Teammate of mine one time did that and ran all the way for touchdown. It can be done. And you see it. But yeah. more often than not, you're going to see what just happened. Well, Something and, bad is going to happen. And that was even such a bad, because it wasn't like it was just an e you know, snap it up and go. Yep. The guy, like, dove on it for yeah. some stupid reason. I'm not, I'm not sure what the thought there was. I hope the young man's okay. You oh, know, he, absolutely. He's being carried off the field right now. He's got... Um, I believe his right leg or something could have got pinned underneath him in that pile going for the football, but you know, not the wisest decision. And I'm sure, you know, when they look at film, you know, come Monday, um, they're definitely going to, you know, just tell them to be a little smarter, especially when you're chasing 30 to zero. I know you want to make a play and try to help your team, but that's not the spot to do it when you're on your own five yard line. I'm going to tell you, if I made that play, I would have a major injury <laughs> of an injury that required me to, to be taken to the hospital and not see the coach until next, next game. <laughs> well, I think here's a chance for uh, Marion to really kind of put their foot on the neck of the, the Mountain Ridge Wildcats. We'll see what the play call is here. Ball on the five-yard line. Hand off to the big back, Jansen. He's, He's in the zone. There he is. That's the case and son. Touchdown, Adam Jansen with the carry. That makes it a 36-0 score. Gene just mentioned that in the slide of paper they had Marion ranked ninth in the state. The, and I'm not, I'm not trying to slap Gene down, but one of the most inaccurate things in the world. Preseason football school, rankings. Yes. High school, college, they're all. They're all based on what you did last yes. year. Yeah. And you could have lost 42 people from your team, mm -hmm. and they're going to still start you there. Yep. Snyder from the shotgun. Jansen with the carry. No, Snyder carries again, takes it around that corner, and he's in the zone. Snyder did a nice job with the fake. He faked me out. He gets the two points. The Warriors go up 40 0. Now, if I, did I understand the um, press box announcer to say we're going to a running clock I, now? I think. I think it's at, okay. th at 35 to zero or okay. a 35 point 35 differential. Point margin. Yeah. yeah. This. Um, yeah, this uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, just in the third quarter, that's probably okay. I, there's been times I've kind of um, criticized that rule simply because at 35 points, it's not that big a margin. I realize they're not going to come back and win, but it's an opportunity for the Marion. Normally, to put in even younger yeah, that's, players. That was I, what I was getting ready to say is it, it takes some opportunity away. Now, a lot of these younger kids out here, they're going to suit up on Monday and they're going to play JV. Right. And, that, and that's, that's all well and good. That's but, true. But to get them, you know, on a Friday night underneath the lights, even though the game's 
borderline out of hand. Oh, that doesn't um, matter. Yeah, it's still an still... opportunity to get you on the field, that, you know, between the lines on a Friday night, and that's important for a kid in his development. Um, I understand why the rule's in place, and I don't disagree with the rule, but that's one of the downsides to it. Exactly. I, I guess my thing was just to me, 35 is a little bit. And I guess if you're on the short end of it, it seems it doesn't seem like a little bit low. Well, but. And you, you, we run into it at the high school level for for baseball. You know, they have the the run rules. Right. The, the right. Fif 15 runs after three innings, 10 runs after five, and well, that's all well and good, and it it saves you some pitching, especially towards the end of the season. It, it takes away from the development of some of your younger players that you can get in and get them some at bats and things like that late in games. There's the kickoff, and then we had a different kicker for the Warriors that time, and I'm I'm apologize, I did not get that number. In this third quarter, our third quarter sponsors have been Heary Real Estate, Marion Kiwanis, and Marion Boosters. Number 10, Austin Newfeld is the one who uh, came back to pick up the tee. I'm not sure if that's his job or if he was the one making the kick. Normally we have, uh, there's always been a freshman each game, different freshman every game, whose job is to run out and get the tee and bring but it But he was on the field and he went back to get the oh, tee. Well, so they, okay, well that, that's wondering. different. Yeah, that might be. <laughs> All right, Mound Ridge now still trying to get something going on offense. And we're at uh, 55 seconds to go, and we got a time in the third quarter, a timeout called by Mound Ridge. This is a Tampa State Bank timeout. We should have a happy Warrior crowd here. I think they're conserving their energy to stay warm. I'm looking in the at the sidelines. I talked to uh, Doug Shaleen at halftime and took his hat off his head and told him I'd been hired to burn it. <laughs> and uh, he said that there's no way that that hat could be bothering us because there's no way we could see it. And I wanted to prove him wrong by having Jay or Danny get a shot of it <laughs> in the stands, but he's not there anymore. He... Do you see him, Jay? He's on the yeah. top row in the middle. Oh, yeah, right in the middle on the top row. If Danny or Jay can get, uh, since we've got, since we got a moment here. There it is, Big right bong, there. there we, we told him we could get him on. Uh, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> is that not the worst hat you've ever seen? He's trying to explain to the guy next to him that it's not, but <laughs> it actually is. We can go back to football <laughs> action now. <laughs> Thank you, Jay and Danny, whoever got that. Quarterback keeps. He pumps. Tears to roll. Gets the ball away. Incomplete pass. Nicely defended there by Peterson. Stone also out there. May not. No, we're not even going to get another play here. No. So that's going to be our. Uh, let's go to our um, third quarter quarterly report, sponsored by St. Luke Hospital. Great place. 38-0 <laughs> is our score. Warriors on top. Well, Roger, I think I don't know what more we. The beauty of having Casey do the quarterly reports is you got a different perspective on things. We've kind of said all we've got to say to some extent here. Mm -hmm. We appreciate St. Luke Hospital sponsoring our quarterly report where we bring you these wonderful, insightful comments. <laughs> <laughs> they are so wonderful. <laughs> well, let me take a moment to once again uh, pat ourselves on the back. Um, we continue, thanks to these fine sponsors, to try to refine the product. And uh, we need Eagle Cable to work with us a little bit more. We would love to get Channel 20 as an HD channel, and there's some possibility of that happening in the, in the not-too-distant future here. If we could do that, then uh, we'd really have something to, to crow about. But we've got a trailer now. When we uh, go down the road, all of our equipment's in a, an enclosed trailer. And uh, there's a shot. We built scaffolding here, and that's, uh, I think, that must be Danny getting a shot of us up there. That's you can't. You, that's our best side, the part yeah, you that's can't just, see. You don't want that in HD. <laughs> <laughs> but Danny and Jay on the cameras and Gene with all of our, maybe we could get, uh, well, and, uh, oh, well, we got to take a sponsor break, so we'll be right back. By Triple R Hauling, your hauling expert. Give them a call at 382-7802 and get things moving. Triple R Hauling. 
Erie Real Estate is a full-service real estate agency specializing in residential real estate in the Marion County area. Erie Real Estate lists and sells the majority of real estate in the immediate Marion area. In fact, they sell the majority of Marion real estate listed by other companies as well. They also serve the surrounding communities in the county, including Marion County Lake, Hillsboro, Peabody, Lincolnville, and Florence. Case & Son Insurance is the oldest continuous business in Marion County and may be the oldest continuous family-run business in the state. The current owner is the fifth generation of the Case family to run the business and there's never been any ownership outside the Case family. They are an independent agent representing many companies and offer a full line of property casualty insurance including home, auto, farm, business, and life. They also specialize in bonds. Eagle Communications, an employee-owned Kansas company offering internet, telephone, and cable television services. Eagle is the presenting sponsor of all MCTV broadcasts. Eagle Communications, our community connected. We are right back, and the uh, next chance you get, Jay, get a shot of Gene sitting down there with the uh, NASA space controls. <laughs> Mound Ridge, second and 10 from their own 30. Hand off over the right side. There's been some nice runs by Mound Ridge. They've just never been able to put anything together with consistency. Tonight. Got a flag down. Yep, flag right there by the tackle. The uh, chain gang got all in a hurry and started to move a little prematurely there. Okay, and there's Gene. You can see Gene down there with the. I'm not sure that shot gives um, the command center. The, the, the command center. Yeah, well, I like that. The command center. <laughs> Gene uh, on his right, the box is all the sound systems and stuff, and he's got the monitors in front of him, and he's just doing magical things. And Jay almost fell off the scaffolding <laughs> <laughs> trying to get that shot. <laughs> all right, that'll be a first and ten for Mound Ridge, and. A big gain uh, on top of a, a nice run. Puts the ball out to the, uh, or down to the Marion 39. Jet sweep. Come around this left side this time. Number 22, Noah Albin out there for the Warriors now. I think you may see Coach Tiroff and the staff start to kind of funnel in some of the younger players and get them some opportunities here in the fourth quarter. Albin's a sophomore. And this is number five coming in. That's Tyler Orocha. He's a sophomore. Coming around the left side again, running hard. Tackle there by 65, Dylan Carpenter. First and 10 at the Warrior 35. I'm sorry, couldn't be the 35. It started on the 39. <laughs> That's what they had on the scoreboard. They just hadn't switched yet. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. Roger, they're just kind of running left, running right. They are, and you know, obviously we've got some younger players in the game getting some experience, and you want to get those kids experience, but you also know that the players and coaches, you like seeing a goose egg on the other side. Absolutely and, and that right. Defense, you know, every defense you play, they're going to be proud, and they're going to want to keep that zero on the board for as long as possible. So now it's up to some of the younger guys to to kind of to hold on to what the the, the starters did early in the game. Absolutely right. Keep the shutout going. Yeah, if you're the guys that were out there for that first three quarters, you want that zero to stand. Absolutely. Another handoff. That time kind of right up the middle. Gain of about, we'll wait for him to make the move here. Yeah, gain of five, be second and five. 
Ball spotted right about the uh, Marion five yard line. On the right side. Pretty close to the end zone. I think yeah, he's just a little bit short. Waiting for a signal, and there is no signal. So, Clock continues to move, and uh, we're in this fourth quarter, and the Marion County Ace Hardware who is a new sponsor for the Warriors, and our fourth quarter sponsors are Carlson's Grocery, Hannaford Abstract, Marion County Ace Hardware. I don't know if we've run through... Um, some of our, we, I know we've done like timeouts and uh, touchdowns and whatever, but uh, Jerry Cady Insurance has been a, a great sponsor for us for a long, long time. They uh, basically are our broadcast area sponsors. So this uh, tower that uh, we're broadcasting from tonight is tonight. It is a J get the uh, Jerry Cady Insurance broadcast area. I prefer the one in Marion. I do the booth, the booth, not the tower. <laughs> I prefer the Jerry Cady Insurance booth. And you see the Warrior sponsors on the screen, Marion Auto Supply, Gambino's Pizza, Edward Jones Investments, and HRK Variety. First and goal from the two-yard line for the Wildcats. Be quite a task for the, this young group of Warriors out there to keep them out of the end zone at this point. That's a good That's start. That's a great start. I'm not sure a part of that tackle wasn't made by the blocker. but <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a loss of one or two on the play. And they're going to give him quite a lot of uh, forward progress, so it'll be a uh, second and goal from the two. Warriors have uh, run a lot of different people out there. Size mismatch over here, but I doubt they're throwing the ball. <laughs> Hand off right up the gut. He's in the zone. So the Wildcats get on the scoreboard. Makes it 38-6 here with 5.25 to go in the ball game. That was uh, Deshaun Fife. We had mentioned him at the beginning of the game as being their best back and uh, their biggest offensive threat. And uh, he, he does seem to be a pretty good back, but uh, they've just never got any kind no. of rhythm going. No, on. they never really got into sync offensively. <laughs> um, it, it just wasn't wasn't there. The Marion defense uh, through the first, you know, obviously three and a half quarters or so played, you know, exceptionally. Didn't give up many big plays and not really many opportunities. Penalty or the um, extra point was good, yeah. but we're going to try it again. Whistle blew before the kick, and then a penalty flag came out. Yeah, Roger, at one point you were making a, a real good point in the first quarter. I think it was first quarter, maybe early second quarter, about <clears throat> the fact that Mound Ridge was not having any luck, uh, particularly running the ball. And they definitely weren't having any luck with a, just a drop back, set up, and pass it. But when they rolled the guy. Yeah that there were some things happening and as you talked i'm thinking yeah and i think you even made this point if they continue to roll him and then work the running plays in suddenly you got a little something going and i'm thinking eee, that could get a little hairy it just never it never materialized no I, I i you know the thought was there obviously they still tried a couple rollouts from time to time but they just never really got into sync with their plan that time the kick is good again and there's no penalties so 38-7 score. All right, Coach uh, Schroeder, <clears throat> you're going to onside kick? Uh, it's one of those things in a, in a game like this, you're, you're chasing 31 with four and a half minutes to play in a running clock. You're, if you attempt the onside kick here, you're almost inviting the Warriors to be a little... Uh, Quit bouncing, you're bothering so our I'm cameraman. A, I'm a little chilly, sorry. <laughs> Uh, you're almost inviting the Warriors to maybe try to put yeah. some more points on the board. And yeah. I, I don't think that it would happen, but you're, if you try the onside kick, you're kind of inviting that, I think. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. You better play it straight up here. I mean, I, I get it. I understand the onside kick you know, philosophy in certain situations, yeah. but the odds of getting six of them or whatever it would take here are pretty slim. You know, if this was a, a 38 to 27 game, obviously it'd be a lot tighter. The clock wouldn't be running. Then I could see it with four minutes left. Right. But even then it'd be a little bit of a stretch. 
Warriors definitely have a uh, much different group on the field right now. Brad Stone is uh, deep in the middle to return this kick for the Warriors. Corbin Wheeler and uh, Tyler Arrocha also back deep. They just, they all look so tiny. <laughs> and that's not putting the kids down. It's no. just compared to the what you normally see. Yeah. Kind of getting slow, getting set up here to kick the ball. They are. The clock is still moving. Well, Gene makes Gene makes the point that we can't score if they have the ball, but they don't get their junior varsity doesn't get the play if the time yeah. runs out either. And they that is an onside kick, it is. Roger. And he it kicked it out of bounds. Goes out of bounds. You're going to get an illegal procedure penalty on the on the kick, and Marion's going to take over right about midfield. Yeah. And I think you're going to see a young group of Warriors out there running running their plays. I don't think we're taking shots down the field or anything, but you know you're going to give them an opportunity to to create something here. Let's see. We've got uh, is Snyder still in at quarterback. I think he is. Yes. No, I no, think no, you're gonna no, it's uh, Corbin Wheeler. Corbin Wheeler is going to take over so at quarterback. Another freshman, Corbin, who has had uh, been in there on some plays, uh, but not a quarterback, he obviously. Had the, he had the ping pong catch down in the end zone yeah. for the two-point conversion early in the first quarter. Now comes in that uh, the quarterback position. Uh, I think we had a few too many on the field. And Mount Ridge called a timeout. Thank you, Mount Ridge. Yeah. <laughs> we got two minutes and three seconds to go, and I'm not even going to write it down. We have guys running off the field. They're calling a timeout. It's a young kids getting experience. Well, the thing, I, we got a, only got a couple minutes, and it's going to be a fast two minutes because even if we go out of bounds, the clock won't stop. But, um, yeah, I want to see Corbin and the rest of these uh, even younger guys and sometimes you may not be younger in terms of chronologically you may be a sophomore but if you haven't been playing varsity and now you here's you getting in there i want to see how you do because yep, you're you're going to be playing in the you know but not later this year next year for sure yep. i look down on the sideline here i see nathan sear did you lose me no i think we're okay, okay. see nathan sear uh, talking to uh uh, Braden Fahey down on the sideline. Uh, we mentioned that Braden's down there in a wheelchair. And uh, I don't know, that's just kind of nice to see. Uh, well, now we've got another one of his uh, teammates, a couple of them coming over and talking to him. All right, here we go. Wheeler keeps. And he falls forward for a nice gain. He's going to pick up uh, about five yards. Good positive play there. The Warriors throw in about five subs. <laughs> they're going to cycle them in and out here, and they're going to try to get off as many plays in two minutes as they can. Number 98 comes into the game. I don't even have a 98 on my uh, <laughs> I roster. I don't have a 98 either. 15 in the game is uh, Remington Putter. 68 in the ball game for the Warriors. I don't have a 68. Second and a short five. Wheeler keeps again. Wheeler's got the first down. Another good positive play by the another young quarterback. Coming down to just about a minute to play as they move the chains. Line of scrimmage is the uh, about the 38-yard line. I'm just evil enough I'd love to see the kids break one and get <laughs> that touchdown too. back. Whoop. Oh, right off his face mask. Yeah. <laughs> I think Morgan looked away there just as the ball was hiked. Maybe time here to get one more play in for, for the young the young offense on the field. Get down under 30 to play. Six, 56, Daniel Hinton just sprinted out there. Number 10, Austin Newfeld, little brother of Tyler. Second and 11. Probably the last play of the ball game. That's a handoff. That went to number two. Peyton Heidebrad. Yeah. Peyton, good, 
Good positive play to end the game. And, and that's going to be the end of the game, and this will be the uh, St. Luke Hospital quarterly reports after these words from our sponsors. All right, our case and excuse me, not case and son. That was a touchdown. Our uh, St. Luke Hospital quarterly report, our final score, 38-7. They've already turned off the scoreboard. Huh? Well, so there's no, uh, no, you know, opportunity to look back I up there. I hope they keep the lights on for us while we tear down. <laughs> oh, man, we've had that happen. Oh. Uh, yeah, don't even say that. Well, talk about something. It's a, it's a quarterly report. <laughs> you know, all in all, uh, uh, for the first time out in the, the 2014 season, you're starting a, a freshman quarterback. Uh, you got plenty of other young kids. Um, I thought they played tremendously well. I thought the kids that we expected to play well did exactly what they were supposed to do. Played hard uh, for the you know three quarters they were in there. Did what they were supposed to do and, and gave support to some of those younger kids that were getting their kind of their first taste of everything. Um, obviously, some things to fix and some things to work on. Had a couple penalties, um, things like that. A couple missed assignments, but all in all, a very positive evening. Uh, for the Warrior team and off to a 1-0 and start and moving in the right direction. And well, I think this team's going to continue to improve week to week as these kids get more reps. Roger, one thing I, I think I liked, I mean, you can go overboard with this, but for the most part, the penalties were penalties of aggression, yes. not penalties of just, uh, you know, brain dead or whatever. No, it wasn't. I mean, penalties are penalties, and they're going to cost you yards, and, and that's all well and good, but... It wasn't um, it wasn't a bunch of, you know, false start penalties or jumping right. off exactly. sides on the defensive exactly. line. It was stuff, you know, we had to play, you know, uh, unnecessary roughness on on one of our DBs early in the game. But that's a play where he's finishing a play hard. He's not going out of his way maliciously trying to take a guy's head off. He's playing hard. He's playing right to the whistle, which is what you want. And he happened to get dinged for it. Um, it's easier to reel them back a little bit than to try to speed them up to make that play. Exactly. So, so I think exactly. the coaches have to be happy with the the way the first game turned out tonight. Well, I am happy with the way it turned out for us. We avoided any moisture. We've uh, had a great opening game victory. Uh, saw great performances from our younger players, and and I really think our team, other than the announcing, <laughs> and and the color, we are the weakest link. The analyst was pretty good, <clears throat> but yeah. in any event, this is Mike Powers for Roger Schroeder, for Jay Smith, for Danny Maddox, and the big dog Gene Winkler saying, "Good night, Mr. and Mrs. Warrior fan." Good night, Red. Good night, Kevin. Good night, Gabby Gabbard, wherever you are. <laughs>